Namaste, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On the Mat. With me this week, Xiu Ming. Xiu Ming, another teacher from our school, is a very bendy yogi. So the sequence that she is leading us through today will definitely seem a little bit intimidating because she's the one doing it. However, keep an ear out for options that we can take so that normal human beings can also follow this sequence. So the theme of drop back as explored in our school last week incorporates poses from the basic level class which is the wheel pose or Urdhvadhanirasana. In essential class we did the standing back bend Anu Vithasana and in intermediate combining the two from a standing back bend dropping back into wheel and coming back up standing again. Feel free to incorporate a small meditation practice at the start and conclude with a nice long shavasana at the end to take this into a 60 minute sequence. Let's begin. Are you ready? She's ready. <laughs> Begin your practice today in a supported fish pose. So, with the assistance of one or two blocks, take your first block from a seated position, place it behind the body. Adjust the height of the block accordingly that suits your body. And as you lean back into the block, ensure that the top of the block touches the bottom of your shoulder blade, the block arriving at uh, the area of the upper back or the area of your heart. Straight legs and feet together as you lengthen the body up and over the block and if your neck is not comfortable in this pose, perhaps it needs to be supported by one more block behind the head. Good. Arms spread comfortably wide, taking the option to lift them overhead if that feels nice for your body or perhaps you might just be Clasping the hands together behind the head, elbows outwards. And find a position of the arms that feels comfortable. Eyes closed for the first few moments here, connected with your breath. Figuring out what needs to happen for the continuity of that breath to happen, even while there is so much tightness in the front of the chest and shoulders. Your inhales can help to expand the chest further and create more space in the ribcage. Your exhales pull the navel inwards and squeezing the air out, giving space for the next inhalation. Stay connected as well to the feeling of the tractioning of your spine. You are introducing space between each and every vertebrae of your body. Let's stay for one more breath. Deep breath in. On the exhale, the arms come down if your arms are overhead and your knees start to bend, walking the feet inwards if your legs are straight. Knees and feet together. Good. Support on the forearms to gently lift yourself off the block and remove all the blocks from underneath the body. Again, lie flat on the mat, face up in a supine position. Take a moment, bringing both knees to the chest and hold the knees with your hands. Maintaining length in the spine. Good. And when it feels okay to move the body, go ahead and do a gentle rocking, rocking motion that will take you up and forwards to a table top pose. Good. Hands and knees position with the palms flat underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips. Continuing to work with your breath, so begin from a straight spine, arching the body on the inhale. Good. Rounding the back on the exhale. Again, inhale, arch your body. Find movement in the shoulders and find lift in the tailbone. Exhale, rounding, table comes down, and the chin tucking towards the chest. One more, inhale for five, four, three, two, 
and 1. Good. Exhale for 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Inhale now. Take your deepest, longest breath. Good. On the exhale, let's bend the elbows to gently lower down to Astanga Pranam, knees, chest, and chin. Now lower the hips down as well as face down and flat on the mat. Roll the shoulders back and inhale, lift the heart in a baby cobra. Beautiful. Exhale, moving back to tabletop position. Let's try this again, arching your body. Inhale, looking upwards as you lift the tailbone. Exhale, round the back, drop the chin down, tailbone between the legs. <laughs> inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, back to tabletop. Okay. So let's try this again. Inhale, arch the body, looking upwards. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, we come down. Inhale, we do a baby cobra, lifting the heart. And exhale, tabletop pose. Good. Again, arch your body. Inhale. And this time, coming down, knees, chest, chin, you will take your arms forward. You will send the left and right arm forward to give the shoulders a stretch in puppy pose. Staying on your chest and ensure there is no discomfort in your neck. Otherwise, modify. You can turn the head to the side in this position. And those of us that feel we can deepen this pose while keeping the chest on the mat. You can work on walking the knees underneath the hips to elevate the hips slightly higher. Good. And in that same way, release by lowering the hips down, lying flat in a prone position on the mat. Next, inhale, keeping the arms extending forwards, lifting the upper body, lifting the lower body. Take the next few breaths, holding your locust pose. Good. Awakening all the muscles in your posterior chain. Active in the backs of the legs all the way to the glutes, lower, middle, upper back, neck, and shoulders. And that will do. Bring the hands in as you come down to press yourselves up to your first downward facing dog position. Good. Paddling the feet left and right, heels and toes. And with one leg straight, the opposite knee bent and perhaps the hips sway side to side. Like a dog wagging a tail and perhaps one shoulder towards the mat at a time. Good. When you're ready, let's come up and tip toes on the inhale. On the exhale, bringing both heels. Down to the mat to find your perfect down dog pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Again, connect with your breathing as you hold this pose. Good. The inhale, broad, broad chest. And the exhale, pulls the navel inwards. As always, you are trying to create a firmness in the lower belly and pelvic floor. creating the awakening of your deep core muscles facilitated by your breath. You might find that constricting gently the muscles in the throat to give a gentle sound in your breathing can help to facilitate this. So, awaken your ujjayi. And that will do. Come up and tiptoes on the inhale. Good. And then with both knees to the chest, exhale looking forwards. Next, inhale, stepping to the front of the mat, left foot, right foot in a halfway lift, looking up with the length of your spine. And with the exhale, come down, belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, and chin towards shin. Good, connect with your breath, rising up to standing position, lifting the arms overhead, and following with your gaze. And that'll do. Exhale, come back down to the mat in a forward bend. Now take a halfway lift. Inhale. Good. Go ahead and step your left foot back on the exhale with the left knee down for a low lunge pose. Inhale, arms up. Good. Can you bring the forearms together on the exhale? Elbows bent. 
forearms in front of the body. Good. Inhale, opening like a book to find your cactus arm position. Take a few breaths here. Expansion across the front of the chest and shoulders. As you do so, also creating beautiful space in the front of the left hip, feeling that left hip flexor stretch. Exhale, release the arms and come down to the mat. Inhale, bring the left hand up and over, trying to touch your back leg and the right arm reaching up as well for a side stretch. Good. Stay with the length in both sides of the body as best as you can. And that will do. Release, bringing both hands down to the mat. Stepping forward with the back leg to the front, taking a halfway lift. Inhale, looking upwards. Exhale, coming downwards. Beautiful. Inhale, rise up to standing. Give the arms a big, beautiful stretching upwards. Exhale, we come down to the mat again, forward bending. Good. Now take a halfway lift. Inhale. And step your right foot back on the exhale with the right knee down for Anjani Asana, low lunge. Arms up. Inhale. Beautiful. Forearms together. Exhale. Prepare for your cactus arms. Next breath. Inhale opens up the front of the chest and the shoulders by separating the forearms, opening up like a book. Take the next few breaths here, finding the expansion into the outward curve. Beautiful. Exhale, release what you are doing. Inhale, take the left arm, sorry, take the right arm up and over to touch your back leg. And then the left arm up to find the stretching of the left side body. Good. And we breathe. And that'll do, bringing both hands down to the mat, stepping again at the back foot forwards to the front. Again, halfway lift, inhale. Good, forward bend, exhale. Rising up on the inhale. Again, bring hands down to the mat, exhale. Good, now a halfway lift, inhale. Go ahead, move your left foot back on the exhale to find a warrior one position this time. Grounding the back heel inwards towards the center of the mat, finding your square squared hips. Your inhale lifts the chest, opens the arms up. Your drishti is upwards towards your hands. Good. Strong front leg and straight back leg with the squareness of your hips. On the exhale, bringing the forearms together again, preparing again for your cactus arms. Inhale, opening like a book. And maybe we go deeper into this stretch. Good. Maintain a strong lift of your back knee. Exhale, release what you are doing. Let's do one more stretch. Inhale as you lift the arms upwards, cross your wrists, left over right, palms together. And as you lift the chin, using the head to facilitate more openness in the shoulder. Good. As you do this, find as much as you can the expansion in the front of the body and avoid compressing the lower back. Good. And that will do. Release both hands down. And we are going to step back this time to plank pose position. Elbows bend for a vinyasa. This could be a knees, chest, chin again or a chaturanga. Followed by an upward facing dog or a cobra. And back to down dog pose with a straight spine. Good. Coming up in tiptoes on the inhale. Bring knees to chest and looking forwards, exhale. Next inhale steps, you back to the front of the mat. Left foot, right foot. Exhale, forward bend, maintaining length in the body. Rise up to standing, use your strong back muscles, lift and lengthen, lengthen and lift. Good, come back down to the mat again, exhale. Again, halfway lift, inhale, connected with your breathing. Exhale, step the right foot back, left foot forwards, warrior one, Vira Padrasana. Good. With a strong front leg. When you're ready, forearms together in front of the body on the exhale. And inhale, opening up like a book, finding beautiful expansion feeling. Good. 
Stay with the heart lifting as if a string tied to the chest, pulling it forwards and upwards as you bring the shoulders back and the arms downwards. And that to do, release on the exhale. And then as you lift the arms up on the inhale, crossing the wrist, right over left, this time palms together. Again, try lifting the chin using the head to facilitate the openness of your shoulders. Very nice. Very beautiful. Exhale, release what you are doing. Bring the hands down to the mat. Again, step your feet back, plank pose position. Those of us that wish can just come to a downward facing dog here, or if a vinyasa works for your practice, then continue breathing as you move and moving as you breathe. Good. Good. Come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Bring knees to chest. Exhale, looking forwards. Inhale, walk, jump, or float your way to the front. Land lightly. Exhale, fold, come down, belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, chin towards shin. Inhale, rise up, standing position, give the arms big, beautiful stretching upwards. Very nice, now come back down, exhale. Take a halfway lift, inhale. Step your left foot back, warrior one, exhale. Good. Arms up with the squareness of the hips and an inner leg engagement. Arms down, exhale, stepping back to plank pose with the vinyasa or just arriving at downward facing dog. Your choice of practice. Good. From downward facing dog, come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Bring knees to chest, exhale, looking forwards. Next breath to walk, jump or float to the front. Exhale, forward bend. Connect with breathing, arms up, inhale, reaching and lengthening. Arms down to the mat, exhale. Good, halfway lift, inhale, look forwards. And step your right foot back, exhale for another warrior one, this time just for one breath. And that'll do, step back now to do one vinyasa or downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, come up tiptoes, inhale, knees to the chest, looking forwards, exhale. Next, inhale, left foot, right foot, or hopping, your choice. Good, forward bend, exhale. Again, rise up to standing, opening chest, opening shoulders, growing an inch taller, two inches taller. Exhale, come down. Beautiful halfway lift, inhale, left foot back, exhale. Warrior one, let's begin, arms up. And for the next exhale, let's turn to open up to warrior two position with a strong front leg and a straight back leg. So reach the right arm forwards and let's do one reverse warrior, inhale. And we are using the left hand to gently support by resting it on the back leg in this position. And we take the next few breaths, trying to find as light a support in the left arm as possible. And try to fully extend out the top arm, bringing bicep close to the ear. Good. Exhale now, a side angle pose, elbow to knee. As you extend the left arm forwards. And same action of trying to be as light on the supporting arm as you can. Finding the support for some deep, deep muscles in the body, facilitated always by your ujjayi breath. Good. And release, we go back to warrior two position and from warrior two, reverse, inhale up. Bringing both hands down to the mat, exhale. Both hands down to the mat, exhale. Take the right foot back to a three-legged dog position. Good, swinging that foot up and over to the left with control. And finding a beautiful transition to a wilding pose, Kamat Karasana. Taking the right hand off the mat. Inhale, lifting the hips high, chest open, and really trying to reach the front of the mat. Good. Exhale, let's flip it back, placing both hands down, and this time thread the right leg under the body and to the left. Inhale, your left arm up this time for a fallen triangle pose. Opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Good. 
Beautiful. Flip it back again, both hands to the mat and feet together in plank pose. Elbows bent, vinyasa your way to downward facing dog. Good, from down dog pose. Come up and tiptoes on the inhale. Bring knees to chest, exhale looking forwards. Next inhale, walk, jump or float. Next, exhale forward, bend, belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, chin towards shin, now rise up to standing, inhale, reach up with length, and bring it back down to the mat, exhale, halfway lift, inhale, now stepping the right foot back, exhale, warrior one, good, and warrior two, arms extending, very nice. Reach that left arm forwards and reverse this. Inhale, take the next few breaths again. Using the right arm to support, touching your back leg, but not too much bearing of the weight. Instead, focus on how your deep supporting muscles can help to find lightness in this pose. And if you don't know how to facilitate that, think about your breath. Inhaling into the chest. Exhaling into the navel. Exhale, now let's bring ourselves to side, angle pose, elbow to knee, right arm extending forwards. Good, creating that straight line from the right heel to the fingertips, keeping the chest open. Again, work on keeping the elbow support as light as possible in the body. Good. And that will do, reversing the warrior one more time. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, both hands down to the mat. Take your left foot back. Start to flip the body up and over from a three-legged dog to a wow thing pose, Kamat Karasana. Inhale, hip high, chest open, reaching. Reaching with the left arm for the front of your mat. Beautiful. And release, breathe both hands down. Thread the left leg under and to the right to find a fallen triangle. Inhale, right arm open. Good. Exhale, release. Bring both hands down and the feet together to step back. You have the option to a vinyasa or a downward facing dog. From down dog pose, come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Good. Bring knees to chest. Exhale, looking forwards. Next, inhale, walk, jump or float to the front. And exhale, forward, bend. Good. Now, inhale as you rise up. Stay with the arms overhead. Exhale, lower the left hand down to the left side of the body. Inhale, side bending, right arm up and over to the left, using the left hand to gently support. Think about going as deep as you can into the stretching of the right side of the body. Avoid collapsing into the left side of the body. Good. Next, inhale, both arms up again. And then on the exhale, drop the right arm down and use that to support gently as you reach the left arm up and over to the right. Good. Take a few breaths. Explore how deep you can go in this pose with minimal support in the right arm against the leg. And next, inhale both arms up. Now we do something slightly different. You are going to grab the right wrist with the left hand. Inhale, pull that right arm upwards. Exhale, another side bend to the left, this time without the support of your left hand. In fact, the left hand is going to help deepen this pose. So 100% essential to understand what it means to be supporting from the deep core. Good. Keep the softness in the body, but maintain its support. Another thing you can think about is expansion and lengthening. Even you think about hugging those legs inwards. These are all very, very subtle ways that the core can be awakened. Next, inhale, rise up. Now switch your wrists. Pulling that left wrist with the right hand. Exhale, come down to the right. Again, we are going to stay here the next few breaths. Every inhale then, focus on trying to create length. Every exhale, you might go deeper, but no feeling of collapsing, no feeling of heaviness, no feeling of compression. Good. Next, inhale, rise up again. 
Exhale, both hands down to the mat, forward bending. Inhale, halfway lift, look up and step the left foot back. Exhale, rise to warrior one. Inhale, arms up. Good, open to warrior two. Exhale, arms extend. Let's do one reverse warrior, grabbing the wrist this time. Inhale, pull, lengthen and open. Again, use this pose to understand what it means to have the support from your deep core. Good. Exhale. Side angle pose. Pull the opposite wrist. No support from your arms. Good. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Rise back up for one reverse warrior. Inhale. And as you bring both hands down to the mat, exhale. Step the right foot back. Swing the leg up and over with control. And you have the option here to continue the theme of not supporting. Avoid the right foot then touching the mat as you lift the right arm up and find your floating wall thing. Good. But keep trying to revolve the body upwards in this pose. Beautiful. Flip it back. Thread the right leg under the body. Send it to the left. And find a floating variation of a fallen triangle. And if you wish, you are always free to just do a normal one with the foot on the mat supporting. So let's flip it back to plank pose. And again, if you wish, continue to vinyasa. Continue to breathe as you move. Or just arriving in downward facing dog. Good. From downward facing dog, come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Bring knees to chest, looking forwards. Exhale. Next, inhale, walk, jump, or float to the front. Good. Exhale, forward bending. Find movement in your spine. Rise up to standing. Inhale, arms open. Come back down to the mat. Exhale. Good. With the halfway lift, inhale. Now we step the right foot back. Exhale. Warrior one, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. An unsupported reverse warrior. Are you ready? Let's go. Inhale, pull that left wrist all the way up and over to the right. Maximum length in the left side of the body. And let's release gently side angle pose. Grabbing the right wrist, pull to the left. Again, the unsupported variation is going to really teach you how to support your spine in challenging positions like this. Five, four, three. Maintain that length is the key. Two, and one, releasing in one more reverse warrior. Inhale, and as you place the hands down to the mat, exhale. Take the left foot back. Inhale, flipping it up and over. You have the option to explore your second wall thing. Unsupported is a challenge. Good. Without that left foot touching the mat as you revolve the body upwards. Strong. Posterior chain engagement. Very nice. Bring it back with both palms flat. Thread the left arm under and to the right perhaps as well. Floating. Unsupported. Right hand lift. Fallen triangle. Beautiful. One more breath here. And release both hands down, stepping back to do a vinyasa to downward facing dog or just down dog. Good. Now tiptoes, inhale, come up. And both knees to the chest, exhale, looking forwards. Next, inhale takes you back to the front of the mat. Good. Next, exhale, forward bending, belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, chin towards shin. Inhale, halfway lift, look up. On the exhale, bend your knees and then slowly lower down to a kneeling position on the mat. Good. Work with your breath from kneeling position. Inhale. Arms up, open chest, open shoulders. Exhale, see if you can come down to child's pose position. Gently allow the head and hands to touch the mat at the same time. Inhale, arms up, open chest, high kneeling position. Good. Exhale, connect with the breath. Find your way down to child's pose again. One more time. Inhale. High kneeling position. Send the hip forward. Open the chest. Arms reach back. 
exhale come back down child's pose position good and let's do one more inhale as you come up to high kneeling pose go ahead and support the back with your hands and stay here to send the hip forward stacking the hips over your knees keeping the thighs about hip width distance hugging the elbows together behind the body so as we hold this pose don't hold your breath continue now the continuity of the breath maintains the support in your spine finding the lift of the chin is optional if that hurts your neck then you might just level the gaze forwards instead come to a supported camel position Good. and those of us that wish you can start to reach for the heels of the feet and if you curl the toes under the feet it helps you to hold and reach if you feel open enough then you don't have to do that you can just point your toes on the mat good now with the next breath slowly lift your weight back up inhale take your time no rush exhale your child's pose is with the legs wide apart so that you maintain a healthy lengthening of your spine we take a few breaths resting your body good and when you're ready to do that same thing again Close the legs gently, rise up to a high kneeling position, lift the arms overhead on the inhale and then come back down, child's pose on the exhale, connect with your breath, inhale rise up again, good, exhale come down kneeling position, last one, inhale as you rise up, you have the option to do one more camel supporting the lower back or holding onto the heels or take the option to unsupport your camel to learn how to really really find that beautiful lightness in the body the softness in the front of your belly that allows for the full range of motion without binding without constricting without dumping the weight into the lower back thighs are hugging inwards find space in the lower back by lengthening tailbone downwards mobilize the thoracic by lifting the heart upwards and those of us that wish from this position you might even start to explore dropping back down to the mat behind you good this is just an option don't feel that you need to do so and while Xiu Ming is there she might as well be going into her favorite pose is this your favorite pose Kaput Asana good and let's release slowly place the hands down extend the arms come up as symmetrically as you can knees wide apart big toes touching rested child's pose position good good now walk the hands back and with the next inhale move your way back to a forward bend exhale walking the feet forward good separate the feet mat width distance ensure that the feet are about hip distance or mat width toes point inwards the feet are parallel now rise up to standing take your time one vertebrae at a time and go ahead and bring the hands supporting the lower back Anuvitasana. Let's explore now. Gentle standing back bend. Inhale, send the hip forwards. Lengthen the lower back to give space once again. And find a lift of the heart as you have the elbows close together behind the body. Stay with your straight legs. It'll help you expand into the outward curve. Release any feeling of binding, resistance, tightness, or stiffness in the front belly. Trust that your deep core is here to protect your spine. Focus instead on expanding into the outward curve. Maximum length, maximum stretch in the front body. Good. And if your lower back is comfortable, you might explore gently bringing one hand to the heart and both hands to the heart, starting to unsupport your standing back bend. And if this feels nice, perhaps you can bring the hands to the forehead. Good. And perhaps you might extend the arms fully. And if you feel like doing a drop back today, knees bend gently to manage the transition. You are going to lower the body downwards instead of 
sending the body backwards in this way not too much momentum on the drop down good so either you are doing a standing back bend or you are in a wheel pose position your choice if you are in wheel pose take one breath to rock the body backwards and on the exhale rocking forwards bringing the body weight forwards to the feet to gently gently lift your weight back up from a standing back bend to a standing position from a standing position coming downwards towards the mat holding the opposite elbows with your hands keep the knees slightly bent to maintain a healthy lengthening of your spine recovering from your practice gentle side to side rocking motion if that feels nice for your body good beautiful so we are going to do another wheel pose another another Urdhvadhanyarasana for those of us that missed that initial wheel pose because we had chosen to skip the transition from standing back bend to drop down so those of us that wish lie on the mat and practice your wheel pose by lifting your way up the conventional way and those of us that want to do one more drop back here is a challenge Xiu Ming here is demonstrating the process of mutating your drop back starting from a chair pose developing a beautiful back bend with the lift of the tailbone good maximum back bend maximum engagement in the spine and then managing her way back with the pelvic tilt all the way down to the mat behind her and if you mutated your drop back you might as well mutate your wheel pose coming up on tiptoes walking the feet out slightly and finding the movement to drop the buttocks downwards to deepen the stretching and openness in the chest and shoulders alien pose wow beautiful let's do this for one more breath good and that'll do gently gently bring the chin to the chest lower yourself down to lie flat face up on the mat hold the knees with both your hands and find a tucking position maintaining the length in your spine reclaiming length in the lower back beautiful practice so let's come out of this practice by rocking our way forwards to a seated position again Good. coming to seated Bharat Vajasana Bharat twist take your left leg in a half lotus left foot place over the right thigh now send the right foot back to the side of the body good and begin twisting to the left with the option of binding that foot with the left arm Bharat Vajasana is a half lotus twist. Take the option of not doing this. Instead, you can just bring the left shin down to the mat and instead of holding the foot in a half, bind, a half bound position of the left arm, the left arm can be holding your right inner thigh instead. So finding a position then that suits your body. Taking the option of a half lotus if you feel open enough. And that will do, untwist gently. Now let's send the right leg up and over to the left to find your full lotus position. Good, again, this is just an option for those of us that feel that we would just want to do a normal cross-legged pose. Please feel free to do so, or perhaps just a half lotus. Now bind the arms, holding the opposite elbows with the hands behind the body. Or if you can, grab the big toes directly inhale looking upwards exhale gently come forwards good touching chin to the mat or head to the mat in yoga mudra gesture of union releasing tension in the lower back finding openness in the hips And let's bring it back up again. Inhale. Exhale. You can unbind your arms. Now let's find half lotus in the opposite leg. Sending the right leg up and over 
the left thigh and then bringing the left foot to the side of your hip. Bharadvajasana, twist to the right, reaching back with the right arm, grabbing the big toe with the peace fingers and the thumb. Good. Stay with the chest open in this pose. And again, just a reminder, instead of a half lotus on the right leg, you can just set the shin rested on the mat. Instead of grabbing the big toe with the right arm, you can just grab your inner leg or the hem of your pants. Good. And that'll do. Release to find your lotus position again. Opposite leg lotus. Balances out the stretching in your hips. Lotus pose number two. You have the option here to slowly roll back, lying flat on the mat, lifting the hips up and over the shoulders to find your shoulder stand variation. Urdhva Padmasana, inverted lotus. Staying here, supporting the lower back or the upper back with your hands, ensure that the elbows are hugging inwards to establish a safe and stable foundation in the shoulders and the upper arms. Or taking the option, if you can, plug the shoulders down to the mat and then hold on to your knees with both your hands maintaining balance. Good. Very nice. Next, perhaps a few breaths, bringing your lotus legs into the chest in a tuck, wrapping the arms around your lotus legs. And those of us that choose not to do a lotus might be doing instead a normal straight leg shoulder stand and plow pose. Or explore this pose in a half lotus variation or a cross legged variation. Now one vertebrae at a time, make your transition down to Matsi Asana, fish pose, gently now. Keeping the lotus legs, holding on to the feet and with your next inhale, strong lift of the chest upwards and stay light as the crown of the head is touching the mat behind you. Breathe, expanding into the outward curve and releasing tension in your neck. Good. And that'll do. Take your time now to come out of your practice, uncrossing the legs, spreading the arms and legs comfortably wide, toes outwards, heels inwards, palms facing upwards. Finding Shavasana on the mat corpse pose to give rest to your body. So thank you very much for joining this sequence. Continue to practice with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste.